An outspoken conservationist named Ed Abbey once said, growth for the sake of growth is the ideology of the cancer cell. While this may be harshly worded, I think it carries an important message. A message important enough that the future of humanity could be decided on how we react to it. Our planet is incredibly diverse. We cohabitate with hundreds of thousands of other living things, and we are killing them. As biologically diverse as we are, directly due to the impact of humanity, extinction of species is occurring at over 1,000 times the natural rate. Perhaps more unsettling still is the fact that we have literally no way to gauge what kind of impact this will have. We think we understand organisms and we think we know everything there is to know, but we're still discovering new species and we don't know what those species do, what their niche is in the world and whether or not they're the next source of a cancer cure or the next source of something that can biodegrade materials that we currently can't. And I think, you know, whenever we're losing a species, it was here, it evolved, it had a purpose, it survived for all this time, it clearly, you know, had a reason to be here. And whenever we start losing those, we don't, we can't see the impact of what that's going to be down the road. Unless you go and look and are, are aware and you'll go for walks in midday or morning or evening and go and look for them, yeah, you probably might be surprised. Um, there's, there's big things, there's little things, there's birds, there's, there's in, insects, microbes, things in the soil. So yeah, there are a lot of, of things that live over there. Yeah, it's, it's surprising. You know, um, sparrows seed-eating things. House sparrows, starlings, robins, cardinals, chickadees, titmice, sort of the usual winter flocking birds. Uh, and every year is different. Some years more birds, some years some, you know, more or less, but it depends on the winter, what, what the fall has been like, whether the weather has been such to pers push birds out. But yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing that, that these little islands of trees, these little islands of green, are very attractive for wildlife. And birds, that's what I think about. I originally started this project with the hope of filming the interactions of students at the University of Nebraska with the wildlife that surrounds them. And between myself and my three classmates, we've actually been very successful in that. We've managed to photograph everything from hawks, owls, deer, foxes, possum, raccoons, skunk, groundhogs, badgers, even fish that live in a rain-filled creek that runs through campus. However, since I've been trying to film these interactions between students and wildlife, I've been disappointed to find that the average person couldn't care less about any forms of wildlife that live anywhere near them. I think this is what prompted me to shift the focus of my project to biodiversity loss. It might not sound like that big of a deal that a bunch of busy college students are more concerned with graduating with a degree than paying attention to all of the wildlife around them. And you're right, I don't think that the world is going to end because someone didn't realize they shared their home with a fox. What troubles me is the mindset that this obliviousness stems from. As humans, it seems like we have started to believe that we have evolved past the confines of the animal kingdom, and that we are so far above every other living organism that it doesn't matter whether or not they exist. Unfortunately, nothing could be farther from the truth. We are just as plugged into the animal kingdom as we have always been. We still eat, we still reproduce, we still breathe, we still need shelter. We are the dominant species on this planet, but we are still just a species.
There's not a lot of species around, but that patch of land does, does support a number of, of birds. So absolutely, it's more biodiverse than having if we just planted it all to turf grass or put up buildings or parking spaces. So that space, because it's habitat now, I think is important. The biodiversity loss and the loss of ecosystem services is right here where we live and, and it, affects, it affects what we do, it affects our life. Since 2006, the University of Nebraska has been working on what they call the Master Plan, which is a planning effort that involves moving green spaces and changing walkways to help make campus more efficient and help launch it into the future. They've hired a firm of professional planners called Sasaki Associates to help them along the way. And on January 23rd, I listened to a presentation as the associates of the firm presented their work. As a student, I was very interested in most of the things that they wanted to change about my campus except one thing right at the end stood out more than the rest. Sasaki Associates recommended that UNL construct a road that would bisect the research land on the back of East Campus. At first I was very upset to hear about this, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized this is, this is exactly what I needed. This is the perfect case study and perfect example for how humans affect biodiversity loss entirely unintentionally. You'll notice that I have here a map of East Campus that was taken from Sasaki Associates' presentation. As we zoom in on the back part of East Campus where the research land is, you'll see the line that squiggles right through the middle and bisects the research land. This is the land for vehicles to drive on. This is where the road's going to be. Here we have a second map taken from Sasaki Associates' presentation. This one represents bicycle and foot traffic. You'll notice again that in the same place the, the line was drawn for vehicles driving in on the road, there is now a different line drawn that represents both bicycle and foot traffic coming in through the road that bisects the research land on the back of East Campus. When you start talking about habitats and habitat corridors and habitat fragmentation, basically that road would bisect what used to be a nice large area for animals and we do it all the time. We put in a road and we don't think about it. But like you said, the fox, now if it, you know, clearly it needs that space to roam and now we're going to confine it to a smaller space, it's probably not going to find everything that it needs to survive. And whether or not it crosses the road, you know, some of the animals won't cross the road. Some of them will. They could die. Um, definitely have, I mean, frag if you're fragmenting the habitat, it's just as bad as going in and deforesting areas. You're so, breaking it up. So you You know, we have to change who we are as consumers and not be so drawn in just by advertising and commercials, and, but really being aware of where the products we buy come from, um, taking action and protesting a road, protesting the pipeline. You know, act. Don't just be aware. You have to act.